Yeah. 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 But that's what we do around here all the time. Right. You know, when we ain't sewing, we, you know, talking, socializing. Socializing. Brothers come from all walks of uh, Louisiana. They want to stop here by the big chief house to see what's going on, what's going down, what's the next event, you know? Because we full of the culture around here. I'm born into this like uh, four generations. I am the, the son of Edward. One of the sons that's still living, there's two of us. One is um, my older brother, Arnold Montana. I have another brother, another sibling by my mother, which is Jules Peters. I'm David Peters, I carry the Peters name also. But I'm David Peters, Montana, chief of the Washita. Washita Nation, why Washita? True, true native people from many, many years ago. The people of the mounds, the mounds that led from Canada all the way down the Mississippi to Monroe, Louisiana, where there are still mounds. These was the indigenous people. They were somewhat like the Moors. You know, they may have been the descent from those people because they were some of the people that helped the people in slavery during the time when they had to run. The slaves ran where places that they looked like where they came from. The black man was down in them swamps with them Indians, you know. Now people come along, with, you know, and then, and then we didn't read much about it because they wanted us to keep a hush mouth about things like that. You know, we weren't supposed to be wearing no feathers. If you got caught with a morning, you know, they were supposed to have been and got rid of all the Indians. They pushed them in the reservation. If it was an Indian, they didn't say nothing. People didn't say nothing because they didn't want them to know. They didn't know what nationality a lot of us was if you didn't tell them. You know, they call us colored Negroes. Black, maroons, you know, they call us all kinds of different names. The feathers come from BK Baptiste that I know of in my family. And he had part Indian blood, just like my grandmother. At least, at least Montana. Cherokee. That's my daddy's mother. It's Tootie Montana's mother. But a lot of people think it started with the Montanas, but they married in. My grandfather married into the family. B.K. Baptiste was one of the first. And um, that Baptiste name comes from way back. You know, when, when it wasn't, we weren't even supposed to be mixing but people mixed anyway. They spoke what they called Creole, a French language in English. But uh, in that house was, was, was about the matrons, the women. It wasn't about the men. They, and Tootie and Edward, my, my dad and Tootie, made that particular house the way it was because of the type of work. And, and I want to say mostly Uncle Tootie because he was a mass at what he did, my daddy too. He'd give him a run for his money. And but they was brothers and my daddy never he always liked watching his little brother back, so he didn't mind being his second chief. But a lot of people talk they talk like they talk about too, they never say much about Edward. But Edward. Uncle Tootie and my daddy walk up with them suits so on. All the attention went toward them. This picture on, on that stitch? That's Edward Montana. That's the suit that he made the year before he died, but he was working on this suit. That was called Sunburst, the end of him and the beginning of me. But he expired on December 31st, 1994. And when he looked back at me, it was almost like I read his, his mind. I could see he said, don't let my work go in vain because he wanted me to pick up 
where he left off at. And I did. That was 1995, Mardi Gras 95. My daddy died the last day of the year in 94. Now mine, we got two or three months to finish this suit because after December, January, February, I think it was in March. I had two, almost three months to finish what he had started. And I finished it and I wore that suit. And when I wore that suit, a feeling came over me. And I just had the idea of doing suits on my own. It's a funny thing how you pick up something and you don't know how powerful it is. But I haven't put the needle and thread down since 1990. child a few times and as a teenager maybe once or twice but I cut it loose because I got interested in girls that was more important to me than an Indian suit but then my daddy used to always be in my ear about man you know how to do things you know how to draw why don't you put your your talents to use and I did I wound up being a jeweler in the city. I am a retired jeweler from Boudreaux, Irving Jewelers, Delta Jewelers, Gym Masters, a bunch of places I can pull off that. I work for learning the craft of uh, working in precious metals and diamond setting, stone setting, stuff like that. I experienced all that through my career. <laughs> No rambashi here now, no rambashi here now. I turn it all around now, I bring it down to the ground now. No rambashi here now. You know, he said no raggedy shit here now. <laughs> Everything is in place and unique, beautiful. You know, some guys coming with them big monsters, the big old monster crowns, and, you know, beautiful, the big crowd. I like to get with it, you know, move on aside. Move my head, you know, look right, look wild at it, you know. Yay! See? Come in, you know, yeah, the, the crown do it itself. And I buck and bow, that crown do just what I want it to do. And it's well balanced, because guess what? You know, never do this. It's always with me. It become part of me. The suits when they made it right and they fit you, it become part of me. My bitches got gold Yeah, 
Spy Boys was great. Because the Spy Boys was the harder to try. You know, and with him up front, he got to be a powerful individual because he's seen everything going and coming. And he had to be a person that's got some strength. You know, because back in the day, they used to fight. So, you know, a lot of people didn't follow the Carnival Indian. They watched that from the Venetian blinds of the city. And when they would pass, he would go run behind them when they go up the street and peep at them, not knowing one day you're going to be part of that. You know, but it was just that deep in our roots. It saved me from penitentiary. Because I did take time out to learn how to do it as a child. So that was time off the street. Family time. It's like the old African quilt. The family work on them and make them. The suits were the same way. We just, just things we did. You know, we played marbles. We made kites. We didn't have telephones and video machines. And, you know, and kids, boy, they were creative. And they had something that was very creative. And they slowed down the pace. They really took the pace away from it when they made the computers and everybody to have a phone. You know, kite building was an art. I drew a lot. I had a pencil and paper all the time. So I did a lot of sketching, drawing people's faces. By the time I went to school, I already had a, a knack how it go. You know, if you drew a face looking at you or draw it over, and you line your eyes up with your ears, same thing, all that comes to mathematics and all that come in these suits. Each bead, you know, each design is basically the same size and you can look at each design and tell. If you put one on top of the other, yeah, it, the exact bead, how you do that? Mathematically, it comes natural. And, and, and you can't take that away from making these suits because if you got one thing off, it's unbalanced. Now I traveled through water that started to rise with a bag on my back and some tears in my eyes. I start thinking about my loved ones and wondering if everyone was all right. While looking around at this ugly sight, I knew in my heart this would be a hell of a fight. But in this journey, I had a change of heart to see people struggling. That couldn't be bought. With words in my mouth that fumbled with my thoughts. I carried a pair of rosaries around my neck I took them off and I started to pray. I knew right then it would be a better day. I met so many people from all around that I thought didn't care. But I was wrong. People cared everywhere about this storm. I came to a little town in Texarkana, Texas, where I met so many people that cared about us all. All types of people, white, black, big and small. They opened their hearts and caressed with their own with tears in their eyes, like if New Orleans was their home. I thank them all for being concerned because I knew this was a lesson to be learned. So don't judge a book by its cover anywhere, even if the cover on the book is torn or bare. So God bless all you people that I didn't know that held out your hands and hearts so. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. God bless everyone that held out their hands. Thank you again from a change of heart man. Asante.